Hey everybody, today on the Hillbilly Files, we're at Jenny Wiley State Park. And Lake. And Lake. <laughs> if you're not from this area, you might not know the story of Jenny Wiley or why this lake is called Jenny Wiley, but that's why we're here. We're gonna tell you. I got the boats. My God, those are beautiful. Look at that one. I want that. I need that. Really bad, I need These that. These boat docks are actually really <laughs> affordable too. They're like $900 a year. Cause we thought about getting a, a pontoon and bringing it out here. We still might. <laughs> you never know. I want that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a pontoon anymore. I want that. Okay. <laughs> so like we said, this is Jenny Wiley State Park. Um, they have camping, cabins, fishing, hiking, boating, etc. Um, we're in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. They also do the Blood Song play out here, which is the Hatfield McCoy State play. Uh, I have a couple friends in it. It's a really good play if you ever get a chance to see it. It's called Blood Song. You could look it up on Facebook probably. But why we're here is to tell you the amazing story of the pioneer, Jenny Wiley. This is how this started. It was a rainy day in October, and Jenny sat in her cabin weaving cloth while her four children played on the dirt floor nearby. Her husband Tom left a few hours ago, weighed down by ginseng to sell at the trading post, and he wouldn't be back till after dark. And this is another story where hauling ginseng goes bad. Yeah. So, ginseng, not a good idea. <laughs> no, I don't think that's it. But anyways, her teenage brother was staying with the family, so the, her husband felt better about leaving his family alone. At one point, uh, Jenny's brother-in-law, who was also around, was working on the field nearby, and he heard a series of hoot owls, you know, like the noises owls make. And he thought it was weird to hear it during the day. Well, he wasn't, you know, new to how things happened, and he knew that that meant that there was probably Indians around. So he ran as fast as he could to warn Jenny, who was pregnant with her fifth child. That Indians were lurking nearby. Instead of getting her family to safety, Jim beat, Jenny took a gamble and she stayed in the house, which didn't really pay off. Unfortunately, a band of Indians, which was two Cherokee, three Shawnee, three Wyandots, and three Delaware, didn't waste any time. They were at her doorstep in broad daylight. They burst through the door and they immediately began to scalp and kill her brother and her three children right before her eyes. In the midst of all this chaos, she clutched her one-year-old in her arms. And luckily, she began to hear the attackers say someone named Harmon. And she started to realize that they had her cabin confused with a neighboring cabin named Tice Harmon. She tried to get them to understand. She started yelling, this is Tom Wiley's cabin. The Indians realized their mistake and considered their options, but instead of just leaving Jenny, they decided to take her because one of the Indians had recently lost a daughter, and they just thought that was a good idea <laughs> to take her and her child. Make her the new daughter. They then, thinking this was an amazing idea, burned the cabin to the ground, took pregnant Jenny, her remaining child, into the wilderness. Over the next few weeks, they mercilessly trudged through the dense forests of Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio, and Jenny was mentally and physically exhausted, she had said. She had trouble keeping up, and she had tr trouble keeping her child up and taking care of the child. They were trying to stay one step ahead of the settler's search party. Well, the Indians eventually seeing that her child was weighing Jenny down, they killed her child. Um, and another thing that happened was she gave birth during this and they also killed that child. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, whole family, her whole family. So eventually they got to where they were gonna hold Jenny. And during her captivity, Jenny, Jenny learned some of their language, and she was valued for her weaving skills. Life wasn't as easy as her captors treated her as a slave, but she did teach a few of their squaws how to weave cloth. Exactly how long she was prisoner is up for debate, but eventually in 1790, she was found near Louisa, which is probably about 30 miles from here, I'd say. Um, eventually, she was reunited with her husband. Her and her husband surprisingly moved back here 
to where we are now and she lived the rest of her life. She had five more children, but her resilience in the face of unsympathetic captors as well as her courageousness in the face of grief and terror is astonishing. Basic idea is the people that settled this land had to be strong and they had to just have something that gave them the will to continue. A little extra. Just that little extra, you know, this is why we're here now. We have to remember our ancestors and things that they did to get us to where we are right now in our, you know, little comfortable life. And uh, so we're here today to do a tribute to Jenny. And as, as we always say, get as close as we can, <laughs> which is basically visiting a grave. You know, you can't bring them back to life. That's as good as it's going to get. So, well, this is uh, this is one of those. I mean, this is obviously this is a horribly tragic story. Um, you know, the whole family getting killed and all that. I mean, you don't get much worse than that. You know, your whole family wiped out. But in later years, this is one. The the legend of Jenny Wiley when this place was created, this entire state park was named after her, and her legacy will live on. You know, through through this place. Uh, it's a beautiful place, rugged mountains. You can see all around you is just nothing but rugged mountains in every direction. And, you know, it's just uh, amazing that something this beautiful, something, something like this could come from such a tragic story. It just kind of blows my mind. Anyway, I just want to throw that in real quick. <laughs> 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 Be happy with a small pontoon. Shoot, I wouldn't mind this size. I'd throw an air bed on there and spend the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could. Well, any of them. I'd say these are rentals here. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. They do rent them. And it's really affordable, you know? Yeah. Then again, carpet. <laughs> they're kind of in rough shape, but who cares? You don't got to worry about they messing float. it up. They're aluminum. You can fish uh -huh. off them. All right, let's see if we can find Jenny. We're not exactly sure where she is in this huge park. Ow. So it's about 33 minutes from here, somehow. Yeah, on the other side. So this is a very big lake, apparently. Yeah. That's crazy. 30, 36 36 minutes, minutes from here. 22 miles. Now this is the Dewey Lake Dam. Uh, we just stopped here for a minute because it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe this is a core, core engineers dam, if I'm not mistaken. They built the lake. But look how pretty. I remember right, Dewey was a flood control uh, lake, and it looks like, I'm thinking so because it looks like they've got it dropped a few feet. You can see the edge around the lake all the way down usually indicates its winter pool when they let it down. But wow, you can see the indicator all the way up there. It's been all the way up here, the lake has. Wow, that's a lot of water. Real pretty place though, beautiful little way out in Kentucky, middle of nowhere, beautiful place. All sorts of stuff to see, old swinging bridges and 
old stone houses and all kinds of crazy stuff to see out through this beautiful place. But anyhow, like I said, we're just heading on. Just wanted to stop for a second and show you this. Really out there in the Jimmy Wiley gravesite. You have arrived. So what we didn't know is that Jenny Wiley is like 36 minutes away from Jenny Wiley Lake, which is very, uh, didn't expect that. <laughs> Nothing's ever as we expect though, is it? No. It's peaceful out here. No pets, foot traffic only, no littering. Fair enough. <laughs> Pretty old log building. Another log house over there. Sounds like they have a bear. <laughs> it's pretty. Looks like a cabin. A house though. We are going back this way. This has been a bear to get to. We've been on the road pretty much all day. Well, which one is it? I see graves up that way. Oh, well, yeah. To the left, apparently. See graves right there, so I was wondering. Private property. It's like a little right away between the cemetery here, neighbor's property there. You've got this little paved walkway heading off back into the woods. Now she is back here somewhere. I've never been here before. I've been to the lake, but I've never been back in here before. Oh, pretty place back in here, look at that. <sighs> I see something, I'm guessing that's it back there. Somebody got a chair up here, stop and take you a break. Really pretty place. Look at this. Beautiful spot. I'm guessing we're going over here. That's where the walkway goes. So I'm assuming she's over here. 
Hmm. Ashler Lodge. Okay. R.B. Spears, Corporal. Company H, 50th Infantry. 1917, enlisted. Hmm. For others, he died. It's about the truth, isn't it? Veterans. <laughs> Anytime I see a veteran's grave, I always stop and mention them. Well, my guess, I'm going to go with the end one here. Just for the simple reason that the pavement goes there. Thomas Wiley. Here we go. Jenny Wiley. 1760 to 1831. And I'll go ahead and read this to you since we're right here. I know Heather read some of this to you earlier, but we'll read this. Oh, excuse me, out of breath. Heroic pioneer mother captured by Indians October 1st, 1789 at Walker's Creek, Virginia. Witnessed the slaying of her brother and five children by savages. That's what it says now, not me. Uh, was held captive for several months on Little Mud Lick Creek in present Johnson County, she escaped from the Indians to Harmon Station at Blockhouse Bottom and was later reunited with her husband, Thomas Wiley, in Virginia. Miss Wiley returned to Johnson County with her husband, and a cabin was built near this site about a year, uh, about the year 1800, where they reared a family of five children. Jenny died in 1831. Now this was a woman, I mean you heard the story, you know what this woman went through. Now this is a story of perseverance on a whole nother level. Back in a time, well she died in 1831, back in a time when things were a little bit wilder in this country. But anyhow, here's Thomas right here. In memory of Thomas Wiley, Private, 1st Virginia State Regiment, Revolutionary War, 1750, October 1810. Wow. That's wild, isn't it? You see these really old graves and really old... I mean, that is wild. I mean, the stuff these people could tell you you just imagine the stories that Jenny could tell. All right, how do we, since we're here, I'm going to look at these two. Not really sure who else is up here, but we'll find out, won't we? Now, there's some older ones, as usual, in our videos, guys. You can see there's stones. Some of them are just stones. Some of them shaped and some of them not, just picked up and, you know, stood in place. And you can see there's one here with no indicator. The Spears, 1860. Uh, that one doesn't have a death date. That one is Lavinia, 1859 to 1912, Lavinia Spears. An older looking one here. Rel Spears and Ada Bell Spears. Uh, 1888 to 1946. And Ada Bell was born on August 10th, 1897. It doesn't show a death date. It just says father and mother beneath them. Uh, 
beautiful place, man. I really can't, I can't get over how beautiful this is up in here. It's really nice. You're gonna be laid to rest, guys. This is where you wanna do it, some place like this. I mean, look at that big tree that Jenny's buried under. Rest well, Jenny, Tom. You guys rest in peace. The big owl. Back up in there, I can hear him hooting. Uh, this is Lavinia Butler and Gus Butler. Lavinia is 1878 to 1956, and Gus is 1874 to 1956. And Eva Lee Butler, 1905 to 1986. Now, I was just curious who else was up here with them. I mean, do you imagine your entire family wiped out and you have to, and you go start another family? That is wild. Can't even imagine the stuff that woman lived through. All right, I'm gonna head back down. Heather's down at the bottom of the hill. There's Julius Spears. 1869 to 1947 and there's the one I showed you coming up All right, let's look at some of these these look like there's there's a few in a row here you can see them you can actually see the graves without the headstones you can see where they're at I'm assuming there's more here that are unmarked Laney these are all Laney's May Laney died in 1995. Dave Laney, 1955. Father. Wade Laney passed away in 1964. And that one, the name and date's gone off of that one. There's nothing there but the bottom half of the plate. But. Presumably, it's a Laney. The family knows who he is. God knows who he is. Okay, I'm going to head back down. They've got keep out signs back through there. So I'm going to assume the graveyard doesn't go any further back than this little bit and that little section right there. So I guess I'm going to head on back down and go find Heather. We've still yet got a long drive to get back home. Uh, this one... Jenny Wiley, most of our stories are lesser known. You know, of course, there's always the Devil Ants and Randall McCoy and stuff like that that are very well known. But most of them aren't. Most of the people that we feature, you know, some are known, some weren't. But Jenny Wiley, she was, she's not only well known, she has an entire state park named after her. I just thought that was wild. So that's why we, we came all this way. We drove out here, guys, to show you this. Tell you this story. Truly an amazing woman. Very impressive. Very impressive young lady. All right, I'm going to turn this thing off and run on back down the hill. <laughs> 